Hello and welcome to Driver's Therapy. Today we're gonna to be talking about the T1 AC test. Let me tell you, I just took the test at the testing center and I passed. And I'm super pumped up because this is the official start. So I am David, I am a current AC certified master technician with my L1 and I am starting my approach to get that world-class technician certification or achievement or whatever we want to call it, status. I am super pumped up because I like challenges and uh, this is going to be a great one. So we started off with the T1 and I'm going to help you guys. It doesn't matter if you're a master tech or if this is your very first AAC test that you're taking, I'm going to help you guys prepare for it and hopefully pass. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first off, you need to buy the Motor Age T1 book. And let me tell you, Motor Age has been making great study guides and materials for a long time. And believe it or not, I really love the way that they set up their booklet. Now, first off, the booklet has a great like informational portion of it where you could read about stuff. They really go into you know detail. They really help you to get prepared. And then they have a test section in the back, and then they have an answer question where they really tell you, you know, what you got wrong, and they give you a little bit of a description. But this is what I use to study. And the T1, in my opinion is a little difficult. It's not hard, but the best way I could describe it, it's a baby L1. And the reason why I say that is the L1 is one of the hardest tests I've ever taken, the hardest automotive test. But some of the questions on a T1 was very similar to the L1. So it kind of gives you an idea that they're really starting to build a foundation for whenever you finish all your T1s, all your Ts, and you do take an advanced level, it all, it all kind of goes back and wraps into one big, you know, uh, area of study. All right, so first off, we're gonna break down T1 and we're gonna start off with engine assembly. And the reason I wanted to start off with that is because you see that in the Motor Rage booklet, you definitely saw it in the test. I can't give you direct uh, answers or questions that I saw, but you're definitely gonna see it. So first off, some of the things you wanna learn about engine assembly. You really wanna know the components of an engine. I mean, hopefully if you're starting to work on engines or if you're looking for your T1, you have some experience. So a lot of those things is like, you might wanna take the test and you haven't worked on engines. I highly recommend you go out and you get your hands dirty. Not only that, it's a lot of fun in my opinion. But if you have taken apart an engine or you've seen an engine or if you've helped somebody put together an engine, hopefully you will understand what a crankshaft is, what a block is, you're gonna understand what piston rings are, what the head, the valves, the camshafts, all that stuff, right? All that stuff is very elementary. But what you're gonna need for T1 is you're gonna need to know how things are essentially assembled, installed, tested and also what happens when things are out of alignment broken or not functioning correctly and what i mean by that we're going to talk about the piston rings so you definitely want to know how to put on piston rings you want to know about the compression ring you want to know about the oil ring you want to know what happens if you install the rings backwards you want to know if you don't install them correctly you want to know if one of the rings uh, is compromised, what happens? Do you get oil loss? Do you get combustion mixture? You really want to understand really how rings work and what happens when they don't work and also how to install them. Also, what tools do you use to install a ring? Do you use an expander or a compressor? Or a compressor, right? <laughs> me, and my, me and my English sometimes. But you know, when you put a piston ring on, you expand it, you put it on the piston, and then you need to go ahead and compress those rings when you put it inside the block. So some of those things you really want to know they're in the booklet, they're in the test. Also, you're gonna to wanna to understand what happens when things are not aligned. Like what happens if you have a bent rod or if your uh, bearings are, are not installed correctly or if something's wrong with the skirt of the piston. You're gonna really wanna know what causes that and also how you are able to identify that, what the symptoms are. Like if your rings are exposed, you know, or if you have an issue with a uh, bent rod, what that does to compression or what that does, you know, to your oil capacity or to the actual overall oil. And you're gonna have to just really understand how the engine theory of operation works. Again, if you've built a few engines, you're a million 
miles ahead. Also, you're gonna have to learn about cleaning, what you use to clean, solvents, what things are recommended, uh, different types of cleaning uh, methods, different types of equipment. Also, testing equipment, feeler gauges, plastic gauges, all those things that you're gonna see whenever you're assembling an engine. As far as the head goes, I'm really going to give you some great information and that's really understand valves. You're gonna have to understand valve seats, what happens when they're not the right height, how you could adjust the height, the different ways you're supposed to adjust the height. Also, valves themselves. If, you know, uh, the different types of cuts in the valves, the way that they sit, uh, different valve springs, the valve spring heights, uh, the valve stem seals. What happens if your valve stem seals are leaking? What does that do to the oil? What does that do to the overall catalytic converter? What does that do to the combustion? What does that do to your spark plug? And then you're really gonna have to start talking about um, how to adjust valve lash. What, what type of valve trains can you adjust valve lash? Is there certain valve trains that you can adjust valve lash that are just set and you just have to replace uh, parts? Or do you use a feeler gauge on certain valve lashes and you adjust them? How do you do it? Luckily, throughout my history, I've adjusted some valves. So whenever I started looking at the test, I was like, oh man, I've done this before. But then of course there's certain engines that you can adjust valves, you just replace parts. I haven't done that, but it was really cool to learn about those two things and to be able to combine my experience with what I'm reading. So engine assembly is gonna be a big deal. So if you know about me, I always add some videos in the description that you guys have to watch. Now, if you don't know about me, David Roscoff, AC Master Technician, we have the number one A1 through A8 AC test prep videos in the world. And so I've been making videos just like this. And what I do is I talk about the study guide. I talk about what I think you should be studying. And then I add videos in the description that I watch that really help me tie everything together. So not too long ago, I found this guy on YouTube. He doesn't have a lot of subscribers or viewers, but he communicates really well and he's going to be talking about the piston rings and about pistons i'm going to put those links in the description so you guys can know i'm also going to be putting a description about the valve seats and then about how how doing you know about different procedures about valve seats so i'm going to put video links in the description so you guys could watch those and it'll help you study for this test all right a couple of things you need to know again if you're a newbie this is going to be i have to be completely honest with you this is not, AC tests are not easy. And if you talk to some of your buddies at work and they're like, oh, those things are easy, blah, blah, blah. If they have their certification, then maybe it was easy for them. But most of the time people were saying that didn't pass. They can't pass. So I'm gonna make sure you guys understand this. You need to know how to read a wiring diagram, an electrical schematic, and you need to know how to use a multimeter. Here in Driver's Therapy, we put together like a seven video series of how to use a multimeter, all the way from the beginning to an advanced level. And let me tell you, you're gonna wanna do that. On our website, Driver's Therapy, we also have different electrical courses, literally a brand new, I've never, I don't know anything about electronics, to advanced looking at schematics and testing things. I recommend you guys do the free stuff first. Get, get yourself a, a Motor Age book, which is not free, but that's gonna be your book. Look at the multimeter videos if you haven't taken any of these tests. Start looking at wiring diagrams and schematics and start trying to understand things. You really need to know how voltage drop works and how resistance works and how relays work. And those things are gonna be super crucial in understanding how to read a wiring diagram and knowing how power works and how switches work and just knowing how the PCM activates something, if it activates it using five volts versus 12 volts or if it uses a ground as a trigger or whatever. So essentially you're gonna see questions on the T1 that have wiring diagrams. They're gonna ask you questions about contacts or about resistance or about relays or about fuel pumps, all of that. Luckily, whenever I was studying for the L1, we made a schematics video showing people how to read schematics on the L1. The L1 is a monster of a test, it is a beast. But again, if you look at L1 material, you're definitely gonna be covering T1 material, it's crazy. So schematics, so we have engine assembly, schematics, Again, just like the L1, it's a baby L1. 
you're going to run into emissions, right? Emissions is one of those that when you first see it, you're going to be a little bit shocked, but it's not that hard. You have your EVAP system, which pretty much contains fuel vapors and then reroutes them back in the combustion process. Well, it's a sealed system. And within that sealed systems, there's like little butterfly valves or valves that open up at certain times. Whenever you're pumping gas, they close at a certain time. They route certain vapors to carnal uh, charcoal canisters and then back into the combustion chamber. Once you look at that system, you're going to have to know some rule of thumbs. You're going to have to know that the EVAP vent is typically always going to be open. And if it's closed and you can't pump fuel, that's probably the reason why, because the system is closed. You're going to have to understand what happens when there's a leak, what type of systems you want to use to test those leaks, like a smoke system, and also how to use maybe a handheld computer to read certain things to see like, all right, this solenoid looks like it's activated. This vent valve is open. Open, blah 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 so let's just knowing the evap system is really important now they talk about some simple troubleshooting that we should all know why a car is not starting you know looking at the wiring diagram for the starter looking at the generator wiring diagram looking all of those things are going to be pretty simple but you want to know them you're also going to want to learn about the cooling system and let me tell you the cooling system is probably one of the best things to learn as a technician, hands down. And the reason why is because you're always going to be running into some issues. Either a hose ruptured or a thermostat stock or it was installed reverse or it's not opening or it's opening too soon or your fan's not working or your clutch fan's not working. All this stuff, you're really going to want to know how it works. And if you do know how it works, you know how simple it is. So just knowing what things are and what kind of symptoms they cause, and the things that they occur you really just want to know that stuff and if you don't know it you want to study the motor age book really breaks it down to like elementary level stuff but if you have some hands-on experience installing a radiator putting on a thermostat knowing what temperature the thermostat opens and closes how to test a thermostat how to test the cooling system a lot of people don't know that you could actually buy an adapter and you could pressurize the cooling system based on the specific uh pressure that the car asked for and then you could see if there's any leaks you could also know if the clutch fan is not working what that's going to do you could also tell the difference between a system that's working at a stoplight versus working on a highway you're also going to want to know about sensors thermal sensors uh, coolant sensors all that stuff that ties in so just knowing your cooling system is going to be really important coil packs Know your coil packs, know how they work, know the primary and secondary side of them, know how they get power, know how they build that in electrical induction field or whatever, know how coil packs work, know how distributorless ignition systems work, know how all of that works really well and also know what happens when one of the parts isn't working. I really recommend that you guys know your ignition systems really well. Also know about oscilloscopes, how they work, what you would use them for. Uh, if you would use them to look at spark plugs or, or uh, if you were looking at the coil packs, a lot of that stuff you're going to really like. As far as exhaust goes, one of the things you really want to know is what happens if an exhaust is clogged. What type of vacuum reading are you going to get? And what is it going to do to the power of the car? And how is it going to feel if somebody comes to a service center and they're trying to describe the situation? How would they describe the clogged exhaust? That one is like a freebie for you guys. Also the EGR, know what the ex exhaust gas recirculation system does. Know why it's installed in there. Know what happens whenever it goes bad or it doesn't. I want you guys to buy the Motor Age book. Great book. I want you to read it from front to back. Then I want you to take the tests. And then whatever you get wrong in the test, I want you to pretty much highlight it and write it down somewhere else. And then after that, I want you to watch those videos in my description. And then I want you to look for your own videos. If you don't see a video for the questions that you got wrong, I want you to go ahead and look for videos and try to get that uh, uh, visualization of what they're doing. What's better is if you are in a school or if you work for a shop or if you're in some type of vocational school, whatever, ask the foreman, ask your boss or ask the teacher to actually show you this hands on and you will learn a million times better. I, I recognize that if you're taking a T1, you're probably starting your journey, but the best thing you could do is ask for help so you could actually do some of this in hands on. I actually went to a machine shop to learn what valve lapping was because I didn't even know. You have to take the initiative to actually go see this done. You have to either do it at the very bare minimum through a video. Best advice is go see it done as a person. 
After you've done all that, you're gonna retake the test. If you get anything wrong, you can email me and I could try to help you, guide you to try to find that information. But if you do all of this, you're gonna pass. You're gonna pass. You can't cut corners. You can't get this book, take the practice test, go take the test. It's not gonna happen. Unless you are really, really experienced, been in the business for a long time, these tests, they're very particular and you need to prepare for them. Well guys, thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I'm super excited because I'm starting my journey on the T's. I'm starting on the world-class technician journey. And if you guys don't know what that is, that means somebody who's taken all the A1 through A8 and all, and they've taken the T1 through T8 or whatever, and then the L1 and L2, and then a bunch of other tests. It's something crazy. Uh, but long story short, it's gonna be a huge challenge and I'm pumped up. All right guys, thank you for watching. You take care, stay safe. We'll talk to you soon.